Earth is described as a water planet. And without a doubt, water is our most important resource. All living things depend on the natural cycle of water. It is the essence that gives us life. One of the greatest mysteries of our planet is the magical cycle of water. Rain pours down from the skies, nourishing parched vegetation. Evaporation drives water skyward. Spectacular springs convey great volumes to Earth's magnificent rivers. And mankind is intertwined in the complex and endless renewal of water. Perhaps the most amazing wonder about this great cycle is water's secret journey underground, where it can travel for hundreds of years before revealing itself on the surface again. Vast reserves of clean water are held within the rock in the Earth's aquifers. And to protect those precious resources, mankind must come to understand the body of our planet. For within that body lies an arterial network of pulsating flow. And deep within the veins of Mother Earth, there is trouble lurking. Trouble from our current activities. Trouble with actions we caused many years ago. And to safeguard our future, we must fully appreciate water as a renewable resource by tracing the water's path through our lives and our planet we'll join a team on a daring journey to follow the connective path of water through the landscape, above and within the Earth. They'll venture into the ailing planet on a quest for knowledge to find out what's going wrong. In this episode of Water's Journey, we will explore the very heart of Florida's groundwater. Over 8 billion gallons of water a day bursts forth from Florida's springs, the largest and most unique concentration of springs on Earth. At one time, it was thought to be an endless supply. But now, the demands of man are starting to exceed availability. Worse yet, the quality of that water is changing rapidly. Is it too late? for the Floridan aquifer? Unquestionably, the world gets its water from aquifers. Yeah, we get a little bit of surface water, but 90% of what we get and utilize is coming from groundwater supplies. Expedition leader Wes Giles is a renowned underwater explorer. As a member of the Florida Springs Task Force, he brings a wealth of experience as one of the few people who has seen firsthand the inside of the Floridan Aquifer. On this day, the task force has given Wes one of the most important mandates of his career, to lead a unique scientific mission to explore and map the inside of the Floridan Aquifer. It is the goal of the Florida Springs Task Force to use this information to help people understand how their activities affect groundwater and springs. They will bring together a very unique team of scientists and explorers to realize that goal. Tom Morris is one of the world's leading cave exploration scientists. His lifetime pursuit to explore the underwater caves of Florida and the life within them. His partner, Jill Heinerth, is probably the most active female cave explorer on the planet. Her wealth of experience using high-technology underwater equipment is a perfect complement for the team. But for this expedition to be successful, 
Wes also needs a piece of equipment that doesn't yet exist. The goal is to dynamically track the location of divers in real time and follow their path underneath Florida. And that's never been done before. Electromagnetics expert Brian Pease was called on to design the technology needed for the project. He has spent most of his life working for the Navy on specialized communications for submarines. He used that expertise to design a transmitter capable of sending out a signal through solid rock and water. If all goes well, this will be the first time the underground path of the aquifer will be mapped in real time, giving us an active picture of the relationship between groundwater systems and society's activities above. During the tracking of the team. Right, this is the receiver. This is a gorgeous example of a disappearing stream. Okay, incoming. The team starts their journey in North Florida. They will be traveling over and through karst terrain, a limestone landscape that is characterized by caves, fissures, and underground streams. The goal, to navigate the complex system of underground rivers from where water disappears underground to the point where it resurfaces in Florida's springs. Each dive will require up to two miles of swimming and hours of decompression time. We're really constantly recycling water. People don't understand that, but that's what we're doing. Um, the water you're drinking today might have already been used three, four, five, six, hundreds of times. And it's important for people to understand the journey of that water. Mankind has explored most places on the surface of our planet. We have climbed the highest mountains and traveled to the deepest canyons. We can fly over the surface of the Earth and see it from space. Yet caves are still a great source of the unknown. Caves require imposing feats of human endurance to explore. Equipped with talents and bravery, the diver is still limited to a finite life support resource that gives him but a glimpse inside the dark realms. Exploring its depths reveals amazing wonders. All right, look at this stream. The current is just kicking through here. Amazing. It's barreling on in there. In actuality, this is the beginning of a long journey for the water as it enters the aquifer. And as y'all know, our goal is to do a series of dives and actually track you as we go across the karst features. All right, well, good luck and um, be safe. Uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you do, we'll name And have a great dive. We'll be on top of you. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Jill and Tom will be in contact with each other through wireless communications in their masks. But because of depth and the thickness of the rock over their heads, they'll be out of voice communication with the surface. Their experiences, a mystery to the rest of the team until they come up. The state of Florida is a literal Swiss cheese of water-filled labyrinths. Exploring and monitoring the inside of these sinuous conduits not only takes courage, but also one of the most refined skill sets of any occupation. In these forbidding environments, they are like earthbound astronauts, except there is no mission control and no way to call for help. Oh, the tunnel really seems to be opening up a little bit here. Definitely getting bigger, Tom. Yeah, we could paint her here. Oh my God. Will you look at this? There goes the floor of the cave. Woohoo! <laughs> this is our entry into the Florida aquifer, Tom. Cut off from the surface, they drop straight down into the basement of the cave and begin their navigation 
through the maze of passages that is the Floridan Aquifer. Well, how far do you think we've gone? Uh, I guess we're at least a half mile in. On the surface, Wes and Brian begin tracking the signal. It's hard to imagine an invisible river, unseen hundreds of feet directly below. They are underground beneath of us right here. We've gone from the fringes of the Cody Escarpment and we're now on the edge of society. I mean, we have Interstate 75, hotels, restaurants, all of these activities and all of this runoff, which is making its way down into this flow path, which is ultimately part of Florida's drinking water. Yeah, they're on the move again. Tom and Jill were exploring this part of the system just a few months ago. They quickly realized something is very different. The roof of the cave has collapsed, and the huge cavern has been reduced to an opening just a few feet across. For the mission to have a chance to be successful, the divers have to get to the other side of an avalanche of sand and rubble. A tight squeeze is challenging enough, but the river is flowing through the crack right into their masts. It's like trying to swim upstream through a fire hose. manages to barely squeeze through, but now he's blocking the water's exit like a cork, and the pressure keeps growing. His equipment is also taking a beating. Inch by inch, Tom gropes, trying to get some leverage. Finally, after minutes of scratching and digging, Tom makes it through. Once past the debris from the cave-in, the divers can see the rest of the cave is unchanged. Cave diving is claustrophobic and dangerous. If something goes wrong, there is usually no easy escape. So, like astronauts in space, Cave divers have redundancy in their life support systems. Divers, like astronauts, have to put their faith in their equipment. But in space, there are no rock outcroppings to catch and tug at the gear. That is what is about to happen to Jill. Five hundred feet from the nearest entrance, with tons of rock in the way, Jill's air system has a catastrophic failure. Jill, it appears to be the O-ring in your uh, mask air supply line. It's leaking pretty darn good. I can't seem to stop it. Tom does what he can to fix the problem while Jill remains calm, but there is nothing he can do. They must abort the dive and make their way back to the surface. They'll spend hours decompressing before they can resume the mission. But for now, the water will continue on its journey without them. One of the biggest utilizations for water in Florida is farming. Although it is a justifiable use, it has also created serious issues that are surfacing in springs, the windows into our aquifer. While some of Florida's springs are healthy, many show alarming, even dangerous levels of nitrates, a common byproduct created by both inorganic fertilizers 
and animal wastes. In the past, there were dire projections about starvation facing the world, but modern agriculture has been able to feed the populace. That miracle has not occurred without a price. The very things that have enabled us to avoid famine, fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides, have unintentionally contributed to the contamination of the world's rivers, lakes, aquifers, and springs. Today's farmers are working to reduce that contamination while at the same time continuing to feed the world. As stewards of our water resources, agriculture probably more than anybody knows the importance of what good clean water means to our economy. Good clean water means to our agricultural production of food and fiber. Byproducts from fertilizers and animal waste both contain nitrates, and nitrates are the problem. They can be great on crops, but when they enter the aquifer and travel to springs, they can ultimately upset nature's balance. As part of an exciting environmental program, farmers working with 24 state and federal agencies have created a major nitrate reduction plan through a method of best management practices, or BMPs. When embraced by farmers, these methods have proven to be effective in reducing the impact of fertilizers and animal wastes entering the aquifer. These aren't canned. These aren't stowball. These are homegrown beans. Delicious, delicious. Recent studies reveal that these methods may hold the key to the survival of both the water we depend on and the products that we demand from farming. Technology changes, we're going to change best management practices. We're going to learn more about and more efficient ways and better ways to do the things that we're doing today. Some BMPs are aimed at water conservation. This mobile irrigation lab analyzes the output and distribution range of sprinkler heads. From the data, the team creates a master plan to optimize coverage over plants. This saves the farmer money and conserves precious water resources. On livestock farms, the challenge is to find a way to effectively manage the waste products that animals create. Rather than letting it all run directly into the ground, BMPs are helping farmers develop a system that captures wastes. Liquid wastes are collected and sprayed on special plants that naturally absorb high levels of nitrogen. Compost and manure is gathered and sold as an ideal natural fertilizer. In both situations, we see that farmers understand that their future is vested in a healthy environment and good, clean water. Like recycling, it is all a matter of finding the right partner who needs the byproduct that they create. Very exciting, it's new technology. It's uh, letting a farmer know that he is a partner and not the enemy. You know, we're all on Earth. We all have to have a partnership with each other to sustain uh, the quality of life that we want. And uh, with, with one side cooperating with the other side, with consumers cooperating with producers, I uh, say, so very exciting. It's kind of new. It's never been done before, really. And uh, we have other states that's even looking at this program that's being done right here in the middle of Swanee River Basin, of the Swanee River Partnership Program. The thirsty ground in Florida quickly soaks up water that falls to earth. Plants soak up some water and filter out some nutrients and pollutants. Other water continues to percolate down through tiny spaces between soil particles. This water eventually saturates the underlying limestone like a soaking wet sponge. As water travels through air and soil, it picks up carbon dioxide and naturally becomes mildly acidic. It slowly dissolves the porous limestone of Florida, enlarging small cracks and fissures in the rock. Over long periods of time, those tiny voids can expand into vast underground caves. Wow, this passage is totally stagnant. Yeah, and it looks like we're getting a lot of stuff from the surface down here. Getting a lot of stuff from above, including nitrates, pesticides, and other pollutants, I would imagine. Comes in with the rainwater off 
Although this could be an entire community source for fresh drinking water, the divers find very disturbing signs. Wow, can you look at that? A huge oil drum right in the middle of the cave. Can you believe it? Yeah, I believe it. For many years, people in the state have used these sinkholes to get rid of trash. What they don't realize is they're dropping it right down into the water they might be drinking tomorrow. It is so sad to see all of this. It's amazing, the, the water still has some clarity. Are you telling me it's polluted? You know, some of the worst pollutants like the nitrates and the mercury are, are invisible. We can't see them. So I guess clear is not necessarily clean water. You got that right. Well, it's a it's it's an elusive kind of sinkhole, Brian. Look at it. Yeah, this, this really goes down. It doesn't look that big at first, but then, whoa! Look at that. Yeah. Look at all the garbage down in this thing. Yeah, you know, people are obviously backing up to this place and dumping their garbage right into the sink. Just using it for a dump. Oh my gosh. That's not as bad as those big chemical containers, but it means we are getting close to an opening. Well, this is it down here. If they're going to come up anywhere, it's going to be right at this spot. Oh, oh look man. At that. Uh. that is roofing tar and antifreeze at the bottom of a sinkhole. What a combination. And there's still stuff in there. And people have no idea, do they? No, they're thinking, they're thinking that they're getting rid of this. They're getting it out of their lives, and what they're actually doing is putting it down into their drinking water, where they're going to reconsume the the very poisons they're trying to run away from. Signal's getting stronger. Yeah, they're going to come up down here. They're not going to be too pleased when they come up in it, though. I think I see a little daylight up there. Here they come. Oh man, I, I can't even imagine what they're seeing down there right now, huh? This is like Dracula's castle. Yeah, does it? Yeah, look at a lot of dirty water up over our heads. It's getting warmer too, this dirty water. The water's in layers. Let's go up in just a little while and see what it looks like. Yeah, I think all the way up to the top. The putridness of this water is unreal. I mean, you can literally smell the, the petrochemicals wafting up in here. You see their light now, look. Brian's technology is finally putting a face on Florida's groundwater, giving the team undeniable proof about the interconnection between the surface and groundwater. Ugh, it's pretty nasty down there. <laughs> oh, you, you can't, you cannot believe what, what y'all just came up in. It's an absolute debris slide going all the way down in here. We followed up this mound of sticks and garbage and batteries and tires and barbecue grills. Whoa, this place stinks. Well, you know this what? sinkhole is one of the many stopping points where Jill and Tom restock with fresh tanks before they descend again. Jill, your comms working okay? Yeah. Yeah, I got you, Tom. All right, let's go. 
The divers head back down and level out more than 100 feet below. We've been in the woods so far. What happens when uh, we have to go through a building? Do you just ask? <laughs> I don't hey, think. hey, we're here. Got to go around. Got him? Oh, yeah. yeah I just... Look at this. You know, so many people think that culverts drain into some kind of, of water purification system and the reality in Florida is we just divert that water directly into holding ponds with no filtration and that water can then leach right down into the aquifer. Right into the aquifer. From here this culvert system is running underground directly to here. There it is. Look at it. Look at the film. So there it is. That now goes down into the aquifer. Directly below us is where the team is. It's incredible. Hey, Tom, we've definitely entered some sort of a transition zone here. The water quality is completely different. Uh, this is what we call a, a water retention system. And the idea is anytime we pave hotels, parking lots, restaurants, any kind of building or development, you've displaced that recharge. That water no longer can sink into the ground. So all the runoff from this interstate, the heavy metals that come off the brake pads when the people apply brakes, the oil dripping off that, the petroleum products, and then that water is soaking right down into the groundwater system below. Hey, Joe, look up ahead at that big chunk of rock on the left. This is what we call Swiss cheese. So much of that rock is dissolved away that there's as many spaces in the thing as there is rock. And all those little holes hold water. This is really what an aquifer is. It's a rock formation that has space in it that holds our drinking water. Is this a bad system? No. We, we need to contain stormwater runoff. You have it's, to do something. You have to. Um, but does this need some kind of buffer or, or protection before it can go down into our drinking water. But as they continue their path over the divers, there are more surprises ahead. That's going right towards the building. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, there. Looks like it's going to go underneath. Right into the building, huh? Yep, right into the building. Go right <laughs> underneath. That's radical. <laughs> Well, the good part about being on the surface is we can go inside and eat, huh? That's it. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I still got so the they're So they're still down there right now? Yep. You yep. got I'll them. have to go down here to pick them up. <laughs> yep. So they're right here? Yep. yep. They're, right. They're, they're right under us. We're going to go. I think they're going this way. Excuse us. Yeah. <laughs> Underground survey in progress. They're heading, heading towards the salad bar. <laughs> They're headed towards the salad bar. Well, it's been almost three hours since we left that sinkhole. Yeah, when do we stop for lunch? Soon, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who would have thunk it, huh? Yeah, right. Next time I dive here, I'll be uh, enjoying the fact that I'm diving underneath my favorite restaurant. <laughs> oh, great. It's classic Florida. Wonderful. I mean, how long we were in there? Like one minute and it's raining? All right, look at this. This is an interesting little perennial creek. And this is a draining a real large local area around here. Uh, and it's an important part of the recharge to the aquifer. But it's also the runoff from our local human activities. 
And you can see here, this is a bacteria caused by our activities. And it's going down into our drinking water. Well, look at this. This is a swallet hole here. And all of the water we've seen running off of all the human activities is coming into this creek and going down here into our drinking water, into the Florida aquifer. All right, let's grab this last sample and get out of here. As Florida's population grows, a greater and greater stress is put on the water supply. In the last 40 years, Florida's population has quadrupled. 450 acres a day is lost to development, meaning vast recharge areas for springs are forever lost. With an average of 300 people populating every square mile in Florida, the population is outgrowing the natural resources. But the Floridan aquifer is a renewable resource. If everyone does his or her part, there can be plenty of clean water for the future. Pat and Larry Benke are an example of what concerned Floridians can do. They have adopted small changes that conserve water and protect the natural environment that they care deeply about. Well, we're so happy to be in this part of the world, in this part of Florida, and to enjoy our surroundings that we really don't want to see it destroyed. Uh, anything that we can do to help preserve what we have here, we're willing to make changes. And we haven't made sacrifices. We still have a very comfortable dwelling, a very comfortable life, uh, but we've paid attention to a few areas, and uh, I definitely think it's worth it. Larry and his family have discovered, like everyone else in the state, that they are part of the problem. The only way to protect it, to truly protect it, is but they can also be a part of the solution. As long as we continue to uh, use the resources, everyone on the planet is a part of the problem. But we can still make a difference by using a little bit less. It, it seems overwhelming when you think about the problems that we have, but if everybody did a little bit, if everybody did one thing, it would, with millions of people, it makes a big difference. Groundwater is not limitless. Everyone can use less water by taking shorter showers, turning off running water, fixing leaks, and installing water-saving devices in toilets, shower heads, and other locations around the house. But awareness of our personal impact on the environment is the biggest critical step. One thing we never did was water a lawn. We mowed the weeds and gradually drought resistant grass took over, but we've never watered the lawn. I, I just think that is a really big waste. Um, bottled water is more expensive than gasoline, and yet people will just waste millions of gallons watering lawns. The maintenance of each lawn makes a difference. Everyone can at least reduce the use of fertilizers and pesticides and use only slow-release products. Watering at night allows more water to get into the grass instead of being evaporated in the heat of the day. Sensor switches make sure your sprinklers aren't running during a rainstorm. But more and more citizens are turning towards an even better cost-saving alternative of drought-tolerant landscaping, which saves water and has many side benefits. If you let some of that lawn go into the plants that would ordinarily grow there, um, you'll get wildflowers, you'll get butterflies and hummingbirds visiting your yard. Uh, you'll no longer have to mow it as much, you won't have to fertilize it. We've got to learn how to see the cycle. Water is not something that is created and then used and destroyed. It cycles all around. Sometimes it's in our body, Sometimes it's in the ground, but it, it keeps cycling through, and uh, we've got to pay attention to the condition of that water for our own health, for the health of our planet. If everyone would just use a little bit less, we'd leave a better planet for our great-grandchildren. So being cheap is actually pretty good for the planet. Humans also process water. Some evaporates as sweat, while some is processed in other ways. 
In Florida, much of that wastewater goes to septic tanks. Drain fields from those tanks often allow nitrates to leach into the ground. A better destination is a wastewater treatment facility that safeguards the community against disease and protects the groundwater from unwelcome contamination. We've spent so much money cleaning up the water that we actually had a valuable resource that had to be reclaimed. We had to find a beneficial use for that resource because we were really cleaned up this water beautifully. The water is in the state of Florida especially, very high standards. The plant speeds up natural processes to break down wastes into harmless byproducts. Fluids in the tanks are vigorously agitated to provide microbes with a favorable environment for feeding. Then, a series of settling and treatment processes creates a finished product. Very proud of the good looks of this water. On a hot day like this, you really want to go swimming in it. Okay, Tom, let me uh, jot down our data here. This is going to be sample number four, looking at the general water chemistry. And uh, let's see, depth is uh, 82 feet. Okay, I got it. Let's go, Tom. I got them really clearly here. It looks like they're heading for those houses right, right over there. there huh? Excuse us, excuse us, cave survey team coming through. So they've come underneath this wetland area, right underneath yes. this pond, and now we're now actually, along this way. I think this is the 14th hole. Whoop. Well, I think the conditions have changed since the last dive. Um, you know, headed into a place like this, the water's probably quite a bit darker. I'm going to mark this just because I'm right in the middle of the fairway here. It'll be an interesting uh, spot to have. Deep below the golf course, the divers continue to transmit the signal to Wes and Brian. And for the first time, GPS coordinates are plotted to show the divers' path and dynamically track the water's journey. Okay, there's our safety line. Head on into the cave. We've traveled a couple hundred feet since that pond, but it's really, really tracking off here, huh? Yeah. It's uh, quite a privilege to be able to lay line in virgin territory. I mean, look at this place. It's amazing. Well, this just goes to show you that there's no facet of life that these underground systems aren't able to travel under. Here, we're literally going underneath somebody's patio here and uh, into their sliding glass door and into their Florida room. How close should I go to the house? <laughs> well, I don't know. Let's go through the house if we can. Let's go through the house. <laughs> well, well, well. How about this? <laughs> You're a comedian. So this is someone's water well? Yeah. There are millions of wells that tap the Florida aquifer here in the state. It's not uncommon for us to find these things down here. They're not moving again. Maybe they decided that's as far as they're going to go, in this direction. I don't know. Oh, well, Jill, forgive the pun, but let's leave well enough alone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they're in the plumbing of the earth underneath the water plumbing of the house. It's a little poetic there, huh? Yeah, now they're heading out towards the driveway. These are underground rivers, actual uh, paleo features that have been around for millions of years. You know, it's quite remarkable swimming through the conduits of a cave. It's almost like a tree. Sometimes you swim through large trunk passages, and then other times it's like swimming through the branches. That is so interesting. I didn't know what you were doing here. I thought you were, when I saw you on the golf course, I thought you were Checking if somebody's putting or <laughs> Heading this way. Now look at this. Oh. Oh. This is uh, reclamation water. This is just what I was telling you about. This is one of the best solutions to Florida's growing water problem. Uh, this water is coming from the wastewater treatment facility. And it's treated water. 
Um, we don't want to drink this water, but this is perfect for irrigation uh, to put out on yards and golf courses, and it's how it's being used here in this golf community. This is an ideal solution for protecting our water resources. It saves water and it uses this type of water for a perfect application. That's really great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, they're still heading off this way. It looks like they're headed down into another sink. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Hey Tom, swimming down these passages, what we're really doing is exploring the hidden rivers of Florida. Yeah, I'm like, Yep, they're right this way. I got a sinking feeling we're headed into a sinkhole. Whoa, watch out. It's steep yeah. here. Ow. Watch out. Yeah. Wes and Brian are discovering there are no places in Florida that are exempt from concern. Every Floridian has to think hard about how their actions might be affecting the groundwater beneath their feet. We can get up here. Out of a sinkhole and into society, huh? Yep, just like that. One world into another. There's an amazing relationship here between these karst features and how society is encroached on them, huh? Sure is. Yep, right over the dive team here. You got them? Somewhere over in there. <laughs> Unreal, inside of a bowling alley. So I guess we can't go through these can't people. Go through, but we can see, still see that they're over there. So there, are they still right over in there yeah, right now? Yeah, they're heading right over in that way. We're just we're walking along beside them. You got them? Yeah. We'll we'll be so done in just a second. That way. Yep. Oh. Look at this, right out here in the bowling alley. Yep, that's They're headed underneath that right there. Yep, that's right. This little guy is a blind albino crayfish. It looks like Procambaris palace. They're only found in the underwater caves of North Florida. Tom is in his true element studying the uniquely adapted creatures that live in caves. These living organisms can teach us a lot about the health of their environment. Water must be pretty clear here. They seem to be abundant. We're going to take this guy back to the Florida Museum of Natural History to aid in our work on cave biology. Good job. Nice shot. Yes! <laughs> Thank y'all. Floridians live atop a vast ancient limestone foundation that was once a shallow coral sea. Laid down over millions of years, the skeletal remains of sea creatures were compacted into rock that is now riddled with caves. Tom and Jill are now traveling through a layer of rock that was slowly washed away over time. It's low, and they have to move carefully to find spaces that are large enough to travel through. Unexpectedly, things are getting pretty tight Moving just a few feet is becoming an ordeal, and the extra effort is kicking up some of the silt on the bottom. If too much is kicked up, the divers are essentially blind. Cave divers always run a guideline so they can find their way out. If visibility becomes a problem, they can grab the line and feel their way to safety. Team has halted once again right here. Oh, signal just shut off. Okay. Well, signal's back on. The caves become little more than cracks, and swimming becomes more oh, like crawling. So sorry, Joe. It's, it's getting ugly up here. Oh, I, I can't see much, but I think it's bigger on the right. More than a 90 degree turn, about a 120 degree turn. Yep, yeah, I'm right over the top at the moment. So it must be really small and tangly down there right now. It's like a big horizontal crack. It's more to right. Yeah, I better go to the left here a little bit. That's too tight. We've backtracked here. We've come back right along the same path, but now it looks like they're, they're trying to negotiate something right here, huh? That's what it looks like. You have them? No, I'm just waiting for the uh, beacon to come back on. 
Jill and Tom have to turn off the beacon. The cave is so tight, they have to put all of their concentration on just getting through. Tom, I got something snagged here. This is really tight. Here it is. You got it. She just shut it off. Is that a means of communication yes. with you to tell you that something? Right. It tells like, me that 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 they're probably not going to be able to hold it properly, or they have to do something with their hands. I'm almost nervous. You can you can feel you can feel that this area they're in right now is different than a lot of the places they've been in. Tom, I've taken off the coil. I keep getting it hung up on these rocks. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm trying to find a way with a little more breathing room. They're zigzagging every few feet. We're going off and then stopping and turning 90 degrees. It's like the geology is really pushed together here. Now Tom and Jill have some tough decisions to make. They may be heading into a smaller and smaller area, and it might be just too tight to get through. Heading back means going through their wake and all of the silt and debris that their fins have kicked up. We're coming back on ourselves here. I just don't know, you know? This has proven to be pretty difficult to... It's not as simple as the plan sounded. No. Oh. Although they have accomplished many things on this expedition, they're looking through the murky water squarely at a possible defeat. Uh, great. That's just right here. Their objective to make it to the spring looks impossible from this viewpoint. The divers decide there is no way to go forward. But before quitting, they have just enough air to look for an alternate route that will hopefully lead to the springs. They've done a big U-turn here. Yes. Visibility drops. Using their lifeline for safety, they backtrack. Uh, there's the line. We don't want to lose track of the line. Our little piece of string that leads us back up, do we? We work down to a snail's pace through here. It'll be interesting to, to hear their version of what kind of environment they were in when they were going through this track. Finally, an encouraging sign. They can feel the current of the water at their back. Now this is quintessential karst geomorphology, huh? This is where karst gets its name, this beautiful lime rock terrain like this. They finally found their way forward. Right over this big stop, huh? They are headed this way. The wood debris on the floor shows Jill and Tom they're getting close to a potential exit. Look at that, huh? It simply does not get any prettier than that. This makes you feel good when you see this kind of beautiful water quality. I'm right over the top of them here. 
Oh wow, look at this. Man, is that pretty. So Brian, this is what we call in Florida a flowing sink, where the Florida aquifer comes and kind of nicks the surface and then goes right back underground. Yep. They're stationary, right? Right here. Ooh. This time, though, they're not stuck. They're lucky. Out, Jill. Big old as recently as 10,000 years ago, the mastodon roamed Florida. This mastodon could have stood as tall as 15 feet. It may have been stopping for a drink of water or been hunted by early Americans. We'll never know for sure. But after falling down this sinkhole, it has remained preserved. The teeth as gleaming white as centuries ago. You can see where the water table rises way up here, but because of the drought is, is down to all time lows. It's beautiful though. Finally, after twists and turns, crawling through the cracks, after being in such tight spaces, this seems like a cathedral. Victory is within their grasp. All right, well, here they are. They're, they're coming through a sinkhole. Yep. I think you can uh, stop tracking them. I think we uh, know exactly where they're coming up now, huh? I think so. Wow, it's how beautiful. Be right here. Here we are at the end of the water's journey, and most people think of this as the beginning. In reality, this water has come all this way through all these features. Underneath golf courses, restaurants, highways, just unbelievable. What a great series of dives, guys. Oh, what a place. Incredible. You would not believe the places y'all have been underneath. In the end, the dive team successfully traveled more than 10 miles through the underground systems of Florida to enlighten people about their relationship with their drinking water. I hope when people see water's journey here in the Florida aquifer, that they take home with them in Nebraska or Texas or wherever they're at, that the same rules are in effect. Water lands on the ground, goes into the earth, travels, and is pulled back up for utilization. It's how we get our groundwater. If you pollute your land surface, you're polluting the very water inside the earth you're depending on. Recognizing that protection of recharge areas is one of the best ways to safeguard groundwater, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection is currently purchasing thousands of acres of sensitive lands within the recharge zones of several of Florida's largest springs. Oh, hi. Pleasure to meet you. A major victory. State legislators have put a priority on funding research, education and land acquisition efforts through the Florida Springs Initiative. Over 300 farmers have voluntarily adopted and installed facilities suggested by best management practices. Additional efforts being made by farms, businesses, homeowners, and local government are proving that we can reduce, even reverse, the negative impact being made on groundwater and springs. It's the greatest groundwater system on Earth. There's not another aquifer on the planet like the Florida aquifer. We can make a difference. We can change the negative direction the water quality and quantity is going, but we just have to put a little effort into it.